This episode of MMA Notes is brought to you by NordVPN. Get advanced security, internet freedom, and complete privacy. Save 73% off the two year plan plus four months free with code MMA Nuts. Wild Alaskan Company. Healthy, affordable, convenient fish sent right to your door. Save $25 off with code BIGFISH25. X Suit. The world's most comfortable suit. I ordered mine. It fits like a glove, doesn't even need to be altered. Save 10% off with code MMA Nuts. Fuse lenses, high quality replacement lenses for any brand. Save 15% off with code MMA Nuts. Defense soap, everyday soaps for everybody. Use code MMA Nuts to save 15% off your order. Hey fans, this is MMA Nuts, episode 682. 682. My name's Ingo Weigel. Matt Griff, MMA Show, by my fans, for my fans, walk the line between serious. And ridiculous. What's going on? Not much. Hey, the Bears didn't lose this weekend. Yep, they're a fucking best team in football. Bye week. I but they're, it. you know, they're in the strongest division in football. By the way, they are. The Lions look like world beaters right now. They're what five and one, I think. In Minnesota's five and one, and Green Bay is five and two, and the Bears are four and two. Yeah. And four and two would put you on the top of some of these divisions. Oh, yeah. So I don't know what that means, but Bears playoffs. <laughs> it's tough because you got two wins. really good teams. I say, I say we got I five more wins. Make it. We have Detroit on Thanksgiving Day. That's going to be tough. Uh, the Bears will win. I don't think You so. heard it here first. <laughs> no chance. I think it's going to be a blowout. In Detroit? I think it's in Detroit. That's a problem good. because I think the Bears have won all their home games and they've lost all away games as yep. of right now. So we'll see. And uh, I don't know how the Blackhawks are doing because they still don't have a deal with Xfinity. Oh. And from what I was reading and hearing, it doesn't sound like that's going to rectify itself anytime soon. There's a rumor that they might do a deal with fubu or fobo whatever that fucking oh yeah is. Fubu, yeah the yeah. streaming thing fubu.tv or whatever yeah so that one might happen relatively quickly but it's it and i think the bulls start their season this week maybe on wednesday yeah. so there's from what it sounds like but again you don't know because you're only hearing half of the equation is that uh the people that own the channel are trying to take a haircut and again it's just they're trying to push the Blackhawks into the premium tier and Xfinity also isn't happy with the Blackhawks being on free TV. They don't like that, but no. the Blackhawks are saying, and whoever owns the channel, well, it's the same thing with like every other fucking sport is on local TV and you're paying yeah. fees on Xfinity or whatever direct TV to get the local channel. So there's still yeah. a fee just retarded because the more they go without being on tv the less i want to watch them so really you're literally losing fans so i don't know what to say about that but fuck Welcome. them yeah fuck, fuck comcast they're always comcast at the end of the day fuck those guys xfinity comcast Nazis. Whatever you want to call it. anyway mm-hmm, mm-hmm. let's get into some mma we had some fights over the weekend let's go pfl do you want to start yeah. there? A little Francis yeah. Ngannou. And what's his nuts? <laughs> that other guy that's Who really we thought was going to destroy big. him. I did, thought for sure. It did not, by that any so stretch of the imagination, destroy so Ngannou. Wrong. Ngannou beat, the, beat, whoa. Ngannou beat him. Uh, to a living death, as yeah, they say. Exactly. So I, I'll show some footage because someone oh. shot at cage side. Perfect. Uh, let's go. No sound. And you can see him just ringing him up with uh, these punches had some very bad intention, but they sure did. <laughs> those are not to finish them. That's to kill somebody right there. Oh yeah. God, so, these are both some big fuckers, man. Oh, so it's reminiscent, but not quite like the Brock Lesnar, Shane Carwin days. Yeah. Love it. That so I mean, yeah, it's completely shocking, right? Mm-hmm. Fuck. And then now there's talk that, and the CEO of Glory is open to this, to having some sort of a fight between Rico Verhoeven 
and Francis Ngannou. Oh, and I, yeah, yeah. I don't I, know if we're talking boxing or kickboxing. I think they should do kickboxing. It, well, Verhoeven will destroy them. If you do boxing, it's at least a little more fair. But I, I would like to see a kickboxing match. I think kickboxing <laughs> is way more interesting right? than boxing. Hell yeah. Right? Yeah. Because we got to sit relatively close and watch, I don't know, what were we, mm -hmm. third, fourth row at Glory watching Verhoeven fight yeah. at one time. I'm like, holy shit. Well, I love so I'm gonna I was gonna save this for later, but I might as well show you the, like sure. from a few, like it was, I think it's from a week ago. There was this glory footage, um, of these two dudes who are basically having a fucking slobber knocker. Man, look at this shit. That guy looks like he outweighs the other guy by. He does. Well, glasses. he's shorter. He's shorter, Oof. right? They're blow, They're just beating mm -hmm. the pulp out of each other, right? And yeah, this is reminiscent of like Mark Hunt. Oh yeah, it doesn't stop. So they keep going, and then the other guy retorts, right? Throwing some leg kicks. Yeah, he's it's going like he's at got it. This cardio. Look, look at this! Like they're just going Oof. at it. Like yeah. it, it's it's on. And I remember when we went to Glory, like it, that shit was happening. Look at this! Like, oh yeah, oh fuck <laughs> yeah. They don't like uh, tie ups. I forget how long you they can don't. hold someone. It's they're, but here the fucked up part is like they're gonna let this guy continue. Fuck yeah, he's, he's like, not I'm dead. Good. I'm good. He's like I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. You good? He's like the ref wasn't gonna let it uh, end there. Um, I know it's a long video, but you know, here obviously, guy in the black pants, the shorts is on Queer Street. I mean, he's getting beat to shit. Yeah, that 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 ref is in there now. He was ready for it. Yeah. So you know, more of that continues, and then uh, they they got a TKO out of that sucker. But I just like Glory, and I think their rules are fun. And if you get two big fuckers like Nganu and Verhoeven in there, I just don't know. Verhoeven is uh what in his early thirties? Um, he's gotta be. I mean, it seems like he's been fighting forever. He has. So I think it'll be awesome. Year. He's thirty five. Okay, mid thirties. And what is Francis about the same? Thirty eight. Oh man. But that's the nice thing about being a free agent, right? Yep. And Ganu and and being in the PFL, and I think they're very flexible of if he wants to fight outside or they co-promote, whatever, they don't give a fuck. And I know the owner, I'll digress a little bit, forgot what his name is, Don Davis, owner of the PFL. He was talking some crazy shit saying he thinks the UFC's next um, rights deal is going to be at least $8 billion. Jesus. Because he said it's it's going to be probably 10 years. And it's he's alluding to the point, like, it's going to be really good for the PFL because once yeah. the UFC signs, there's not any other sports that are going to be open for bidding for a long time. They're going to be the next one. And I think he was saying that there's five potential bidders for the UFC. And it's probably going to be a frenzy too, because you got to think of out of all the sports to have probably one of the more valuable ones in the aspect of there's no fucking off season. It's just go, go, go. Yeah. So it's not stop. It's, it's good and bad because the it's quantity over quality at times. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Like they don't take breaks in in any capacity. I know <laughs> zero slow down a little COVID, bit. COVID, fuck uh -huh. you. We'll find an island. <laughs> There's no stopping us. Right. So, good and bad. So we'll see what happens. But that that one's coming up, and good for them if they can get eight billion. Because I think the other thing I read too before I, I talk about Chris Cyborg as we're kind of digressing is that um, that UFC lawsuit that the fighters had agreed to this updated proposal mm -hmm. for like 375. I think that gets judged tomorrow to see if they're going to oh, really? accept that. So when the show comes out, they'll probably have already said yes or no and see what comes of it. So interesting. Yeah. And then the last thing from PFL, you had mentioned Chris Cyborg <laughs> wins and now has her fifth title from the five organizations ufc bellator strike force 
Invicta wow. and PFL. I know she's only got the four belts here because she just won the one over a weekend. She can't carry them all. Good lord, it's a lot of weight. Too much, too much to carry. She did take some damage in this, but I think yeah. she's thirty nine, so she was pretty happy to win her fourth different, or sorry, fifth different title, five different organizations at the age of thirty nine. So yeah, it's crazy. Because who else has done that? <laughs> Nobody. She's thirty nine. Yeah. Nope. Fuck. And I think she only has two fights left. Okay. If that, you know, she's done a lot. I don't know what else is left for her to do at this point. Um. Yeah, I mean, not much, nothing. Whatever she wants. Give her some big money fights. Let her make some money. Let's get her off OnlyFans with that weird stuff. Well, I was going to do OnlyFans <laughs> the right way, not like, hey, look at me go fishing. Uh, <laughs> That's not the right content. Cyborg. Yeah. Uh, do a little sponsor action. Uh sure. Why not? Everyone, this episode is brought to you by Manscaped, the global leader in men's lifestyle and grooming. Every man knows the unbeatable feeling of a fresh barbershop shave. Now, what if I told you that you no longer have to wait weeks or even months between appointments to experience it? Introducing Manscaped's newest innovation, the Chairman Pro Electric Foil Shaver. A game-changing tool that brings the luxury of a professional shave right into your home. Whether you're after that daily silky smooth finish or prefer to maintain a rugged 5 o'clock shadow, the Chairman Pro Electric Foil Shaver is your go-to for precision and style every time. Head over to manscaped.com and join the over 11 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by using the code MMANUTS for 20% off and free shipping. I swear, they're adding so many people. I think when we first started doing these... They were at what? One million? Five, five million men worldwide. <laughs> I think two hundred people, Matt. There yeah, were I think that we, were, we were one of the first two hundred. We were we were number one ninety nine and two hundred. <laughs> That's right. And now they're well over eleven million. They got yeah. a great product. You're not going to cut yourself, or the potential to not cut yourself, and uh, it's great. Love it. Yeah, and remember, you can get the Chairman Pro today and experience a shave that is as smooth as you deserve. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code MMANUTS at manscaped.com. 20% off and free shipping with the code MMANUTS at manscaped.com. Word. This episode is sponsored by Drift Air Freshener. Drift started as a solution to better scent. Each product is designed to fit seamlessly into your space while bringing you the freshest, real scents possible. Free from harsh chemicals found in traditional air fresheners like phthalates, parabens, mineral oil. That one always gets me. Yeah. Only use the good stuff, <laughs> natural, essential, and fragrance oils, and more sustainable materials to bring your best looking, best smelling air freshener yet. Looks good, smells good, all good. That's you know, right. I, let, Go ahead. Hold, anytime somebody takes out a product that I can of their something out of their product that I cannot pronounce and has weird letters, it's got to be bad. So I'm glad they took out the phthalates whatever those are that's right it sounds terrible it's not good and so i got the new flavor of the month the new scent white pumpkin oh let's, man let's check this out what does a white pumpkin smell like mm. wow <laughs> hmm. I, it's good i don't know how to describe this yet vanilla hint of pumpkin Ooh. maybe a little nutmeg Hint of pumpkin's good, not overly pumpkin. Now, let's see how they describe it. It's a ray of sunbeams through the kitchen window, casting golden light on a freshly picked pumpkin waiting to be carved. Fresh notes of white pumpkin get a warm, spicy twist with cinnamon and nutmeg, while vanilla cream adds a sweet, decadent hint. See? I'm on point here. And we have a special deal for our listeners. You can save 20% off with code MATT20 at drift.co slash MMA nuts. That's 20% off with code MATT20 at drift.co slash MMA nuts. Nice. And right back to it. Uh, what do we want to talk about? Um, well, here we go. Big right. Art Musasi suing Bellator. PFL and key executives seeking over 15 million in damages. Uh, some things he's alleging are breach of contract, but not pro providing the fights that he was promised and putting them on the sideline forever. Unjust enrichment and bad faith. They profited at his expense and didn't fulfill their obligations. He says monopsony allegations, 
uh, limiting, uh, which basically they li try to limit his market opportunities and tr treated him unfairly. And he also lastly says they're classifying him as an independent contractor rather than an employee, which he thinks he's an employee. So, yeah, I think he's an employee. <laughs> Can you fight anywhere else? No. Um, it depends because sometimes they do, but for the most part, no. Uh, John S. Nash on X kind of went into some of the details of the contract and he said his contract with Bellator Musasi paid him 150,000 guaranteed plus a $600,000 promotional fee. So he got 750,000 per bout. And if he finished his opponent, he got another 50,000 bonus. And after four fights, his guarantee would rise to 200,000. Mm -hmm. And let's see PFL allegedly being fighter first while also trying to renegotiate his contract. We talked about the monosopy. You heard Monos me. I can't, say, I can't Monos say that fucking word. It's, there's a lot of it's, weird words. It's on like this a show, monopoly, man. but different. It's there's weird like words. PS in there. I know it's one, those, it's one of those shows. So we'll see what happens. I mean, I think he's got a case because you can't, again, you sign someone and then you sideline them. It's fucked up. And yeah. a lot of these companies do that. And uh, I think even the UFC, they just have to offer you contracts and then it just keeps ex or offering you fights. And then if you don't take it, just extend, extend, extend your contract. Yeah. But in this case, they didn't even offer him fights. So I'd like to see how that plays out in court. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately now he, that bridge is burnt from probably both sides for Musasi. So he doesn't really have a venue. Like what is he going to go glory Go bare knuckle or go back to the UFC, but I can't see him in bare knuckle. I don't think he's the kind of fighter for that. No, and or uh, there is the bare knuckle MMA, but I don't know how well they're paying people because he ain't going to get seven hundred fifty grand anywhere else. I feel like those things are good for like slugger type guys, guys who go for broke. Yeah, and he's more of a surgeon. You know, I think he needs the the more rules and gloves and all the shit so agree because i think he gets handled <laughs> in bare knuckle yeah. unfortunately because he's uh it ain't right for him right he's he's no so. he's no uh mike perry nope. <laughs> mike perry is built for that shit so he we'll is. see what happens and then we have ufc 308 this weekend yeah so let's uh share the screen here got a couple good fights unfortunately i, I don't like this first one because I don't know. I feel like you're, I don't want to say Max is over the hill, but I don't, I feel like you're feeding him. I don't feel it's a fair yeah. fight, you know, Taporia versus Holloway. I'll pull this up and Taporia is the favorite. He's undefeated. 15. Yeah, I know. I know. But did you want to talk about that? Yeah, go ahead. I'll okay. Just, I'll stop sharing. Yeah. I, I still, you know, I think Taporia, you know, um, if he can catch Holloway early and start taking some gas out of the tank, I, I think he has a chance like to definitely win. If he doesn't do that though, Holloway, he's like Diaz, you know, pop, 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 pow, a lot of like volume of strikes going on all the time. And I feel like um, I got to take Holloway on this one. Like okay, hands, good I, for you. I don't understand how he's, he's a favorite uh, um, to pour you. I, I totally think Holloway can handle him. I think it's going to be a decision though. Yeah, I mean he's hard to finish. That's that's yep. That's Holloway, you know, like you're saying, like the Diaz brothers. So he's got 15 wins and 13 of them are finishes. So yeah, and nine of them are first round. So it's just for me, it's hard to. I, I'm with you. I'm hard. It's hard to pick against Holloway, but it is. I know he's over. You know, he's up there. I don't want to say over the hill, but he's he's up there. I don't want to say he's the gatekeeper. Oh no! <laughs> you already have a gatekeeper. <laughs> I want to do part. that. You can't have two of them. I've got to do that too. I want to take Tapuria. Yeah, but again, is it can he finish him? Because that's that's a big thing. And first round, can he finish him? Yeah. And I know Justin Gaethje dropped Holloway. He's still got fucking hand. He's just so goddamn durable. So it's it's a. Uh, yeah, I think it's got to be a decision, but I'm going to go with Tapuria. It's going to be a tough fight then. But again, I don't like this fight. I don't fucking like it one bit. 
I don't I don't like so, this matchup. And yeah. it will go to the next fight, which I'm surprised it's still happening, right? I'm yeah. Trying to go back here on the fucking UFC website is dog shit. So you have Robert Whitaker, rank number three. Hamzat Shemaev. How is Hamzat rated number 12? I don't understand that. Yeah, I don't know. He's undefeated. He hasn't fought in forever. That's the problem. It's been a year. 13 and 0 and 11 wins, six, well, 11 finishes, six KOs, five sub. But motherfuck, his wrestling is so stout that he determines where the fight goes. And usually when the guy can determine where the fight goes, is the guy that wins. And I don't see how fucking, oh, here you go. Here's your journeyman. (laughs) And I'm putting that together. You said that. Ah. Um, I just don't care what version of Whitaker this is. I I see no path for victory for him yeah. at all here. And it's really just how to, it's Shemaev. How does he want to play with his food? Does he want to just fucking grapple, fuck him, take him down, pound him out? The one of those other fights, he was just fucking around and did the stand up. Yep. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, why why are we fighting like this? He this took a lot sport. of punishment that he didn't need to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't he, think he'll do that here. No, I think he can just fucking... I think it's time to take the guy down, pound him out fast, and and move on. I'm just surprised he's actually going to make it to the fight because what's the last one? About a year, just yeah. over a little over a year Us- ago. That was so. the Usman fight, was it? Yeah. Okay. Well, majority decision. I mean, I'm, I'm with you. I have all, all day. I think, I think he's going to KO Whitaker. That's what I think. Yeah, that'd be like nice. second round, maybe. I I don't know. This this could be a great fight, or it could be a terrible, <laughs> one sided, terrible wrestling grappling match. Yeah. You know, I, but I don't see that because I think Shemayev will please the fans, and then we could kind of look at the rest of the card. Mm-hmm. Um, Kalayev, Rakic. I don't know why Rakic. Why, this Rakic. fight doesn't really seem to make sense because. He's like from Rakic Serbia. He's been knocked Go out Serbia. in his last two or three fights. So pull up his record here. KO'd. KO'd. So kind of a weird matchup there. It is. We got the Pirate fighting. Rafael Dasanyas. He's going. Another Nurmagomedov. Maganomedov. Thought Barnett pulled out. So these the all these fights aren't actual because the, the UFC doesn't always update their website and the one interesting is there's no women fighting on this card it's kind of weird maybe because it's in abu dhabi uae same difference are they in fight island yeah island makes sense no females yeah all of the cyborg might do well over there maybe so a couple fights and then a couple not great fights so yeah. What else is going on? Uh, I wanted to get your opinion on this tattoo I just found. Okay. There we go. I'm curious to see what you think. Um, what's happening here? There you're, you're gonna see. They're gonna okay. do they're gonna show you how it goes. Hmm. This is semi gay. <laughs> Whatever's going this is this like a paint by numbers. Kind of. That's how this they do how tattoos. I feel, feel like this. Look at how fucking real this looks. This is crazy. That's incredibly real i just think i mean i know we go back to the whole um do you want to put a man's face on your body probably not but no i think that's gay as fuck to get another man tattooed on your body i mean the from a realism perspective that's a nine and a half for sure yeah um as far as like what the tattoo that's a negative five you're gay as fuck at that point, if you're doing that tattoo, any and in tattooing a fighter, it's just weird. Like, why are you doing that? I just love you so much. I want to put a picture of your head very close to where my cock is. It's very odd. Very odd. I want to talk about gloves. Gloves? The new gloves. So there's a guy on X. He's going by Hey Jive Picks. So he says, The new UFC gloves have ruined knockouts, and the data proves it. So let's pull up some stats here. Just got a little love. 
So you say, and over the last three years, the knockout to decision rates have been fairly consistent where, okay. uh, let's start in 2021, 51.2% decision, 33.9% KO, 2022, 46.6 decision, 33.6 KO, and then 2023, 48.7% decision, 31.4% KO. So you're probably like... 32 and a half average KOs to decision. I don't see where the submission is in here, but anyway, I so, think unless you're just looking at decision KO, but anyway. knockouts, huh? Yeah. So then since the gloves, there's been a 60% decision rate, a 22.9% KO. And in the same year, 2024, before the gloves were changed, 51.6 and then 32.4 for chaos. So everything was pretty consistent. And then you change the gloves and now we have a, oh, about a 10% drop in the KO oh. rate, which so is, is it the gloves leading to less power? Well, another person put a, a stat together where you can see it more visually. So let me pull this up. So Ooh. I love visual stats. Latshaw has a big picture here. So you can kind of see um, what's happening with the gloves, with the old gloves to new gloves. So you can see the difference in KOs is 10%, 10%, 6%, 12, 12, 12, 29. Because sometimes it also matters like who is actually fighting. Because if you have a guy that's, in there that's normally KOing people and either retired or he's injured. So there are some other factors yeah. you got to take into account. But if you look at this all across the fucking board, it's down. That's a fucking problem. That is, yeah, a, but again, so it's only data from effect. this year though, right? Is that right? Yeah. So it's like January through May 31st. So the first, what, five months. Mm hmm of data versus the last whatever june july august september october so it's five months versus five months this year and you're seeing across the board drop of probably about i don't know 12 percent less ko's yeah i'd be interested to see what happens like six months from now or a year from now because i think they need individual fighter stats like they need to know if the guys there's way too many factors. Like this is a, crazy... there is a lot, but when you look at it by weight class, you can see the trend, like it's yeah. not good. And again, like you didn't gain it. All you gained was visual. So like right. you, you didn't improve eye pokes. You're getting less KOs. You added color. Yeah. Nobody gives a shit about color. People want fucking blood. And right. if, if this is the case, you better make a fucking change quickly or, or you don't give a fuck about the sport at that point. Right. Or reduce the cage size. Like that's the other thing yeah. that, that increases KOs. Take a foot off at hundred percent. Yes. Smaller cage makes more knockouts because you can't get away from people. Right. You got to engage. So interesting. We'll have to keep a, tracker on that and see in the next six months what happens so what else is happening uh it's gonna show you the <laughs> ufc 309 poster okay jones versus miocic can i say Let's gay in advance what do you think about this uh it's all right i, I like blue so i'm impartial they could be smiling at each other I think they should be holding hands. They're more serious. Super Remember, serious. I can't believe it's happening in like a month. Yeah. Crazy. And uh, I think Aspinall is a backup fighter in case someone gets hurt. So somebody's fighting. There's yeah. going to be a heavyweight title fight. And then everyone's going to retire. Yeah. Steve A will retire. John will retire. And once again, I see no path for victory for Steve A. Zero. <laughs> And I think John is going to absolutely maul him. And I would be happy to see John take him down and throw elbows. And he'll be able to throw 12 sixes. So I think yeah. out of uh, spite for fucking Matt He's Hamill, he should just come way. out, take him down, and drop 12 sixes the whole fight. Yeah. All day. <laughs> yes. All day, all night, all day. 
So I'd love that. Uh, I got a couple of Conor McGregor's for you. Okay. I don't know if you saw the moon the other day. We were driving home from DeKalb and it was super golden. It was wild. Super, it, was like, it felt like uh, morning the entire night It looked when you looked outside. It was so bright. Yeah, so Connor made a post and I want to share him. He's losing his shit over this moon. Nah, here. Yeah. The phone isn't doing this justice, folks. Yeah. Can I want to have a look at that moon quick? Is it wait, the, the moon is on the blade and low level. It's like the moon... Surely the moon's gonna go up. Look at the thing. <laughs> Have a look at that moon, folks. Quick, LJ. It's like a double LJ rainbow. Yeah. That is the maddest. It's like the sphere. It's like I'm looking at the sphere. Yeah. What? <laughs> what the fuck? He's crazy. <laughs> what the fuck? No. Nah. Nah. What is with these phones, man? Look at that moon, quick, everyone. Yeah. And tell us. Yeah. Is it going up? It's actually going up. That's usually the moon's up there, like. It's down there. It's a sea. It's at me oil level, and it's huge, <laughs> and it's going up. A huge. Yeah, Can you see that? That's rising up now. Look. Oh, oh it's my... risen quite a bit already in just the time we've been watching. Yeah. And so that was one of his epic videos, and then he's got another one. He's he thinks wrestling is killing the sport of MMA. Shocker. Uh, okay. You know, I'm in that camp, and here's him watching the PFL over the weekend. Come out, look around, fuck off. It is. Wow! <laughs> wow! Oh, oh, oh my god, no! What the hell? Oh my god! What? Wow! Oh my god! No way! No Why is he way. excited about it? I don't get it. He's just fucking around. <laughs> I love him. He's just losing his shit this weekend. Yeah. Good for him. Good for him. Maybe that's what he just needs to do is just fucking troll on X or whatever, but good for him. You can tell he's drug free. What else is going on? Well, I, we're down down to the time of the show where we go. Doo, 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 doo. It's time for today's UFC in five game, where Matt guesses. Oh, here we go. <laughs> the fighter based on five clues that I will give him, okay. and he will get a guess at each clue, and the game will continue. Let's see how how he uh, does. I was at four last week. Four, yes, that was a hard one. Might have been two weeks ago. I don't respect. The I don't remember. But anyways, here's middleweight. Okay, mostly. Hmm. Uh, Rich Franklin. Nope. Let's see. Nope. Mm. 11 UFC fights. That's it? Yeah. Middleweight mostly. 11 UFC fights. Well, see, I'm trying to think of who, who went up and down. No, Anderson Silva went up and down, but I believe he fought way more than 11. Yeah. It's like 16 or 20 even. Yeah, middleweight. The fuck else went up and down? See, that's where I get stumped of uh, who else went up and down. Forrest Griffin, he fought way more than that, but I'll, I'll throw him out. He was 205, though. Nope. Former champ in the UFC and strike force. Yeah, give me a second. You'll see. Uh, Luke Rockhold. You got it. Thank you. You got it. Nice. Correct. It Three. One better every time. It's <laughs> pretty solid. I was like, I would not have guessed that. So nice job. Thanks. That's, these are tough. They are very tough. I think I blew Sorry, out Matt. You got all it. my brain power, and I think I'm bleeding from my rectum. So that's fine. You're welcome. <laughs> Did you see uh, Nate Diaz and Brendan Schaub got some beef? No. Yeah. So I'll, I'll pull up this tweet. So uh, I guess Nate Diaz says tweets out. He says Brendan, the big old pussy Schaub, with a little crying emoji, and then Schaub responds, "Oh, buddy." 
I probably got 20 pounds on you. He probably has over a hundred on him. He, maybe not that much. And he says, uh, not too far off. He says, I'll snap your neck, set up a grappling match and let me know how it goes for you. Have one of your handlers read this tweet and get back to me. And then he went on another like 10 minute tirade saying, uh, if you really want this, you can come get it. Like I haven't been, it's like, I'm still in shape and I'm training. I'm like 240 right now. But if you and I go in a room, I'm going to fucking snap your neck. He was pretty adamant about it. Yeah, I like it. So I don't yeah. know what that beef is. But again, Nate is a 155er who probably weighs 170. Brendan retired like 15 years ago. But he was he's a heavyweight. The only problem with a grappling match between Shab and Diaz is I remember a grappling match with Shab when he did the Shab shutdown and basically <laughs> ran away the entire yes. fucking amount of the match. So yep. I would be concerned of a grappling match with Brendan Shab in it. I don't need any more Shab shutdown. So <laughs> the Shab shutdown. And he was well, all air, air grapple with Shab. Oh, I like that KO'd. one. He was like, we got KO'd. Yeah. Maybe I can find that. So yeah. uh, what else is going on? <laughs> uh, let's see. What do I have left? I have a KO and then some knowledge. Okay. I gotta, let me do a few more things and then we can go into some KO knowledge stuff. So Cormier had this statement about cowboy coming back to fighting. He said for years now, he's been openly using steroids. I'm against his return. I'm honestly against the idea that you could find a loophole, go in and use that low p- loophole feel better while using that loophole come back and fight because you can pass a clean test so what do you think about that i don't have a problem with it yeah i don't understand it this is salty man over here who lost yeah because again there's a guy who got big after man he's oh he's he's in charge (laughs) it's like charles man. yeah pretty much (laughs) and he golfs now too which is Kind That's got to be ironic. impressive to see that swing. Yeah. So. But, you know, it's, I don't know how much of an advantage it is because it's not like when these guys exited the sport, they yeah. were on like massive losing streaks. So just because you throw in some steroids, he's not going to come back like this awesome fighter just because he's stronger. Am mm-hmm. I like, he may come back um, a little better than he would have been without that, but he's still, he still needs a favorable matchup. You can't just like what he's going to go in and then fight the a top 10 guy. He'll get his fucking ass handed to him. Steroids or not. The steroids yeah. are just going to let him be able to train closer to a normal person. And he's right. got to come off of them. So whatever yes. advantage you had, it goes down to here. You, you yeah, you're going to gain a little, but it's not to the point where he's, he's not anywhere close to anybody that's still fighting. Right. Except for Tony Ferguson, <laughs> which is a fight that they probably should make. So <laughs> I'm in. Yeah. Make it happen. Winner leaves town. And I got a little throwback. This this will make Ooh. you feel old. Let's see. Pull this one up. Punch out. Oh, geez. 37 years ago. <laughs> Hell yeah. What a game. Uh, I played that uh, about four or five months ago. Yeah, a motherfucker. It's hard. Yep. Sandman. Were you able to beat guys. it? No. I, okay. We got stuck at one of the fighters. I don't remember which one. It was very frustrating. I had no cheat codes. Uh, let's see. I got a couple of tweet of the weeks. Okay. Know, what we got here. I'm ready. Oh, I'm going to have to fucking, unfortunately, blur this out. But, you know, Tesla came out with those robots, so... I kind of worry of when this is going to happen. <laughs> of like <laughs> the fucking deep. robots. These are all UFC fights. So this will yeah. be so. Bl- That's Chuck That's Liddell. Happy. <laughs> That's uh, Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva, yeah. Oh, Anderson oh, Silva again. Yeah, again. Oh, oh, damn. Yeah. So it didn't, look, it didn't look like much, but hey. Yeah. You know, and pretty then cool. how about how about this? I've seen this toddler mm-hmm. tough little fucking uh, MMA cage tree kids with a little fucking punching bag. Mm-hmm. I wish I had that when my kids were kids. I don't care if they're girls. You still train them a little bit. 
Hell yeah. And let's do some KOs. We got. All right. Well, I have this this one here, which is a boxing match. So two guys are going at it, you know, doing a little boxy box. One guy's uh, starting to get the upper hand, right? In, in a second, mm-hmm. you're going to see that. And then uh, a little throwing around. Old boy, old boy decides, yeah, I'm not having that. Kicks him, <laughs> kicks him in the face. Yeah, this was a uh, MMA fighter that didn't do so well in his first boxing match and had a little bit enough of it and wanted it's it like, over. That's it. I'm just going to KO him. I'm done with this shit. Because that was what people, like, remember when conor mcgregor box floyd mayweather jr and yeah everyone was going oh man i hope he fucking head kicks him i think there was something in the contract that said if he throws a kick he loses like his purse so i would have loved to seen that though it's a dick move though i mean you should 100 percent get banned from boxing if you pull that kind of shit yeah so that that was that i got a couple of ko's here yeah, let's see. Let's see. I make my sound. I'll share sound. No. Oh, yes. I'll put it on and we'll see what happens. I think I got to turn it off. Here's one. Oh, jeez. Ah! Yeah, it's brutal. That looked like a movie KO because all the fucking juice on that guy. Oh, got it all of the shin. Oh, like, look at that. The whole side of the face got the shin. Yeah. Ah! You got that one. And then I don't know what these guys are doing. Oh, soccer kick! Was that a soccer kick? Yeah, sure was. Yeah, he's down. <laughs> when <laughs> you get, when you make this motion, it's very bad. On the way, on the way down, he caught him with the soccer oh, kick. That's so brutal. Pretty so bad. brutal. And that takes us right into knowledge. We got. All right, I'm, I've been I've been a fan of these. I don't know. Here's another video of a guy doing stupid shit with a bull. Here he goes. Oh, oh, you got <laughs> can he still walk? <laughs> I am not okay. One more time. Oh, boom. oh man, that was pretty fucking sweet. <laughs> These people are idiots. Who would I would not do this? No, thank you. No, I mean, you can't fuck with bulls. That's the like one of those things you shouldn't fuck with. Um, yeah, I got brain damage just from watching that actually. Sorry, <laughs> and then. Let's see. We've seen this girl before. I think it says Jada Rounds on TikTok. She's got some anger aggression issues. Ooh. Here, here we go. Oh yeah. I remember this. <laughs> Probably make it a killing on these videos. Oh, for, for sure. Thing. Jeez. Yeah, you get to just. I do. Confer. It's aggressive. She's very angry. Like, <laughs> she should check her pants because I think she shit herself. No kidding. I hope that was edited in, but judging from that video, I don't think she's classy enough to edit that in. I think it's legit. Uh, I'm going to guess she's from the deep south, maybe Florida. Florida woman. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. And that note, that should it now. That has been this week's edition of MMA Nuts. My name is Ingo Blago. Matt Griffith, thanks for playing. <laughs>